Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to November. We're in the deepest, darkest part of Leicestershire and it's the end of November. It's absolutely blowing a hooligan and every now and again it chucks it down with rain. We've got the rods out, we've got the bivy up, we've got some tactics, we've got seven hours. I'm gonna try my best to catch you a day ticket car. Okay hey guys, so tactics for today, bait wise. Just a bit of backstory. I came here about a week ago. I only come to this venue in the winter. It's not a summer venue that I come to, far too busy. I tend to come in the winter just to try and get a bite, you know, no matter what the weather. I came a week ago with the maggot rigs that I like to use, that you've seen me use before, and four pints of maggots, and got absolutely battered by small carp. Now I've been fishing this venue the last two winters and I've never had a problem. I've never caught any of these small carp before. They've obviously got to a size now where you're just starting to catch them. Even on size five hooks and uh, the maggot rigs that I use, I got battered by carp between two and four pounds now. That's nice to see the bobbins going this time of year, but it's not ideal when you're trying to wait out for something a little bit bigger. So I've had to ditch the maggot rigs this week and kind of start again really because that's all I've ever used on here and it's been quite successful for me. So to go out with the uh, wafters and the balanced pop-ups that I'm going to be using, I've got a bit of a mix I've knocked up. Now I don't want to discourage the small carp, I don't mind them being in the swim. What I don't want is two to four pound carp hurrying out the swim with a hook in the mouth and uh, dragging a lead. It's only going to spook anything else that's in the area. But if I can get those carp feeding on the bottom and searching round, it's probably going to bring in, bring in something slightly bigger. So the mix that I've knocked up to go out over the top in the spawn is um, a ground bait mix. So I've got a stick mix that I've put into the bucket. Uh, into that I've added a couple of handfuls of four mil pellets same flavour as the ground bait and then on top of that I've put in some spod syrup. Now once that's soaked in a little bit I've added some lake water just to get a consistency like ground bait like you would in uh, like a matchman would use and I've just let it soak in for half an hour just to absorb all the water. Now the consistency I'm looking for is where I can make it into balls put it in the spawn but it'll break up quite easily when it gets on the bottom so it'll leave like a carpet going down. What I don't want to do is have it too dry, spom it out and there's absolutely thousands of seagulls here. If it's dry on the top it's going to spread everywhere and they're just going to take the whole lot. So while I'm uh, hiding underneath the shelter waiting for the rain to calm down, I think it's a bit much asking the wind to calm down, but you never know. Just go through one of the rigs I'm about to put out. The reason I'm using this rig is I'm on a day ticket lake and I would imagine in the summer months it's seen a high volume of people coming through. Now, much the rigs in vogue at the minute are pop-up rigs and the Ronnie rig is no exception. I'd imagine these carp have seen plenty of pink, bright yellow, popped up ronnies, one to two inch off the bottom. And they're probably getting a bit sick of them by now and must be wary of them. So I've tried to go in with a slightly different approach. I have got one rig out there at the minute. It's on a yellow wafter, quite a small one. 
see how we get on with those smaller carp. And the second rig I'm going to put out is a German rig. Now I've got 15 pound IQ2 on there. Quite a stiff material, kicks away from the lead nicely and a size five hook. Now, as I've mentioned before, once the hooks go in, I don't want them to come out. And even when I'm maggot fishing, I'll still use a reasonable size hook for what would be in that instance, quite a small bait. On this one, I've got a 15 mil pop up, but what I've done with it is I've weighted it down with a BB shot there. Now the reason I've done that is so when it sits on the deck, the pop-up's going to sit just above the hook. I don't want it popped up off the bottom, I want it sat as if it's on the bottom. But I just want that bait to take the weight of the hook so when they suck it in, it goes in and stays in. So guys, you see me using the German rig quite a lot in my fishing. You will have noticed in my previous videos that I use it as often as I can really, if I can get away with it. If I can get away with using a bottom bait or a wafter, I'm always gonna go for the German rigs. In the summer, I'll use the coated braids and in the winter, normally, if the bottom suits it, I'll switch over to the fluorocarbon. It's almost invisible in water and it kicks away from lead really, really well. The German rig in itself is very, very similar to the old stiff rigs that we used to use for bottom baits. The only slight difference is the way the bait is mounted on the hook length. Obviously on the old stiff rigs, the hair would be part of the actual rig itself. It's just been an extension of the hook length. But on the German rig, you've got a ring swivel and tied onto that, you use dental floss. The beauty of the dental floss is if you've got decent sized hooks like myself, size fives I normally use, it's my go-to hook. You can cut off your bait and put a different one on. You tie your dental floss on, blob it down, you're way to go. Doesn't matter if you're using 12 mil pop-ups, 18 mil pop-ups, bottom baits, wafters, whatever you want to do, even going back to a maggot rig, you can just cut it off and tie a new one on. Hey guys, apologies uh, if it's windy, but I've managed to get outside the bivvy now. It's been chucking it down for about the last hour. Not ideal, good fishing conditions. It's mild, can't complain. Three weeks into November, you know, it could be frosty, couldn't it? So let's face it. What I've got out in front of me is the second of two islands on this lake. It is the smaller one. And there's a marginal shelf all the way around it. Now, I'm not gonna be fishing on the marginal shelf because it's only three to four foot deep. You can get about seven foot in places, but it is quite a lot shallower than the rest of the lake that's out in front of me. I'm choosing to fish the deeper water. I have fished here before, and I have fished out of this swim in this area, so I do have a pretty good idea what's out in front of me. I have used a marker float before, and I have had a lead around. I've got some markings in my phone from a previous session, unsuccessful I might add. So I'm gonna use them as a starting point. So my right hand rod is gonna go just off the right corner of the island. Like I said, I'm not gonna go on the shelf. I've just brought it back, maybe two rod lengths, and I'm at the bottom of the far shelf. I'm in about nine foot of water. Uh, over that is where I've put the spawn mix that I've made up that I showed you earlier. Now, in that is the pellets, the ground bait, and a little bit of corn. And over the top of that, I've got that yellow wafter on uh, an IQ2 rig, on the German rig. Just to my left, out in front, halfway across, there's a, like a little gravel seam. 
most of this bottom is clay it's a man-made lake and there is a nice little bit of gravel there i don't know if it's when they dug it out or whether they've actually put it in but it's about halfway across my second rod's going to go on that and that's going to have the pop-up that i've made into a wafter there again on the german ring Fantastic. That's what we've been coming for. Covered in leeches. I think I've had them small fish feed over me all day. Finally managed to get one. Fishing the bigger baits over the little bits. Certainly worked this time. Wow. Makes it all worthwhile. Let's get her back. Thank you.